One of the most common uses of drones is for use in broadcasting and cinematography. A high bandwidth, long range, reliable data stream is quintessential to a good broadcasting drone system. Our club's activities have led us to accrue a significant amount of experience when it comes to live video streaming from aerial systems. Components of the AUEVSI SUAS drone competition, which our club participates in, involve live image and or video streaming. There is an autonomous object detection task, which involves surveying a marked area and detecting ground objects, and a mapping task, which involves surveying a designated area to generate a WGS-84 Mercator map. Both of these tasks required us to transmit high-resolution images throughout the limited competition mission time. Another option proposed was the usage of a cellular network to transmit data. While this option is cheaper, connection quality is highly dependent on cellular network quality, latency is relatively high, and it depends on the existence of a cellular network in the first place. For the AU VSI SUAS competition, which takes place at a remote Air Force base, cellular networks are not an option. The solution we settled on was to use a long-range Wi-Fi based system to achieve a high bandwidth connection to our drone. Because Wi-Fi is capable of transmitting any kind of data, it allows us to add new data streams much more easily. A two antenna setup was chosen, with an omnidirectional antenna on the drone side and a directional antenna on the ground side. This setup maximizes the range and data quality of the link, since a directional antenna can be a range several orders of magnitude more powerful than an equivalently sized and priced omnidirectional antenna. The specific hardware chosen was a Ubiquiti bullet connected to a 6 dvi antenna on the drone side and a Ubiquiti power beam on the ground side. The hardware used in this project is relatively inexpensive and designed for outdoor use. With directional antennas, signal quality drops off drastically if the antenna is not locked onto the object you're tracking. To ensure consistent data quality on the connection, an antenna tracker system was built, util utilizing two NEMA 23 stepper motors to form a two-axis tracking system. This system keeps the directional antenna pointed, pointing at the drone's omnidirectional ante antenna at all times. Some design goals for the antenna tracker were to make it cheap to manufacture while remaining stable and balanced. For versatility, it was made compatible with both a standard tripod mount mounting bolt and a custom tripod that uses five screws for greater mounting area. The altitude axis is controlled by a stepper motor and pulley system, bringing the weight of the motor further down and improving mass distribution and stability. There is also an adjustable counterbalance mounted on two carbon fiber tubes to balance the weight of the power beam dish, putting less stress on the belt, pulleys, and motor. The weight of all these components is supported by a turntable bearing, ensuring smooth rotation on the azimuth axis, which is controlled by the second vertically mounted stepper motor. All the custom components are 3D printed, allowing for complex geometries and low cost production. To ensure the antenna tracker would closely follow the drone, we developed a high-level al algorithm to calculate the azimuth and zenith angles the antenna tracker should face through the following process. First, we convert the drone and antenna tracker's co GPS coordinates to Cartesian XYZ coordinates, where each coordinate corresponds to the distance from, that, from the Earth's center on that respective axis. Next, these points are rotated by an appropriate amount such that the antenna tracker's coordinate lies on what would be 0 degrees north and 0 degrees west. This is done because at 0 degrees north and 0 degrees west, the viewer's horizon is parallel with the YZ plane. A fixed horizon on the YZ plane helps out with zenith calcula angle calculations since those are done concerning the horizon itself. Once this rotation has been done, the azimuth and zenith angles can easily be found through some basic trigonometry. We used Ubiquiti's AirLink to determine whether our system would work. AirLink allows us to choose a competition ground and see the results of our bandwidth at the competition ground. For the actual task of video streaming, our team utilized a Jetson Nano running GStreamer and the SRT, Secure Reliable Transport, streaming protocol. The Jetson Nano would read the camera input into GStreamer and output it over a UDP SRT data stream, encoded in H.264. The video stream could then be read from the ground station. The resulting video stream was virtually completely artifact-free and had a decent, la decent latency time that was within our la limits. Other solutions tried included an RTP video stream, which had lower latency, but proved to be prone to artifacts and signal interference. For this reason, we chose SRT. This system was used for video stream testing drawing our live streaming projects and was able to stream 1080p 30 video with no dropout. This system has a max range of 10 kilometers with a line of sight. We found that a line of sight is crucial for directional antennas. If there is even a tree between the two antennas, the signal will just bounce straight off the tree and most likely never get to the other, other antenna. We hope this talk has been helpful to you and you all consider a Wi-Fi based streaming solution on your drone. 
We are Amador UAVs from Amador Valley High School, and thank you.